Uh, hey guys, uh, it's the Comms here. Just wanted to start out by saying that um, on the last uh, video series, I definitely heard your guys' um, your guys' feedback, and uh, a lot of you guys were unhappy with my mic, and I agree it was pretty staticky. So I got this new one. Um, hopefully, I sound a lot better. Um, also, I tend to do this sort of sweeping motion over my cards with the cursor when I uh, think during my turn and talk about plays. Um, a lot of people found that annoying as well, so I'm going to stop doing that and just hold the cursor in sort of a neutral position. Um, if you guys have anything else I can do to improve the experience for you, feel free to let me know in the comments on either YouTube or TempoStorm.com or shoot me an email or something. Um, I definitely just want to make the, the best experience for you guys. So um, let's jump in. Uh, as I'm recording this, Undertaker Balance Changes went live about an hour ago. So um, the meta is definitely going to shift really rapidly and there will be a lot of people covering um, the changes in that. But for now, I think uh, before someone establishes sort of a really strong aggressive deck, uh, the greedy control decks are going to be what's going to be very strong on ladder. So we're going to play some warrior control today. We made a few changes now that we don't have to be as scared of Undertaker. We didn't do anything really crazy like cutting a fiery war axe, but we did do some cool stuff with the deck. So let's take a look. So starting out, um, we have a pretty pretty standard list of two execute and two shield slam, just two very good removal spells for one mana that sort of let warrior control be the control deck that it is. Moving on, we're only playing one whirlwind. Um, it is a Gromesh activator, and it does kill muster for battle recruits, which is um, very important as Paladin is one of the strongest ladder decks right now. Um, we used to play two, but now that there's less aggro decks, um, we're only we're cutting down to one to play some greedier cards. Um, two Fiery War Axe, uh, sort of key card in the Warrior deck, lets us kill a lot of different threats. Also very good against Mech Mage, which is still one of the primary aggressive decks. Uh, moving on, we have Armorsmith, uh, enables our Shield Slams and just sort of lets us heal. It's also a good body. Um, we can Cruel Taskmaster to make it a 3-3 and trade it up. Uh, it's just a core Warrior card. And of course we have Cruel Taskmaster, one of the most versatile cards in the game. We can pump our creatures to trade them up, we can activate Gromash to kill our opponent. We can kill our opponent's creatures with one health, and uh, just a very strong card in general, it's a 2-2. We can ping our own Acolyte to draw a card, or our Armorsmith to get armor. Um, very strong card. Uh, we're playing one shield block. It's it's good just because it's free, it draws us a card and then gets us some armor. But with shield maidens, you don't really need um, to gain armor as much. And we don't need the, the rapid, cheap heal that this provides as much anymore now that Undertaker's been nerfed. So we're just playing one to filter um, filter our draws. Uh, two Acolytes, very important, especially in control mid-range matchups. Um, which lets us draw more cards. Uh, we can get a few uses out of it ourselves with Whirlwind or uh, Cruel Taskmaster. Uh, or Baron Geddon, and we can hopefully set up a situation where um, our opponent's board lets us get some uses out of it. But this provides card advantage, um, helps us filter, and, you know, just a very strong card, uh, helps us fill out our curve at three. And then we are playing one big game hunter. This is very good against Dr. Boom, which a lot of people are playing, and it'll almost always have a target, um, except in the Kel'Thuzad Druid deck. But even then, it's a, it's a three mana 4-2, which is not the worst, helps us smooth out our curve, and just a, it's a good card. We can also, um, even if our opponent has no targets, we can actually Cruel Taskmaster our opponent's creature with uh, five or more attack to uh, put it into big game hunter range. Uh, moving on, we have Death Spite. Um, we're playing two, it's sort of a core warrior card, it's a very strong weapon with uh, deals four damage and has two charges. And also the death rattle um, is very synergistic with uh, Acolyte of Pain, Armorsmith, um, activating Gromash, can also be used as AoE clear in combination with Whirlwind or some Baron Geddon, some of our other AoE cards. Um, just a very strong card, helps us set up a lot of cool plays. And we're playing one Brawl. Um, despite that there's going to be less aggro on ladder, Brawl's very strong still. It's a, it's an equalizing mechanism for when we get behind against Druid, for example. Um, and it just, uh, it's basically, if our opponent has two or more creatures, it's usually going to be, um, get us advantage just because it deals with a lot of cards for one card. Then we have Harrison Jones. Again, Paladin is a very prevalent deck on ladder, um, it can also be used against Jaraxxus to disarm him, uh, Control Warriors making a comeback, people, a lot of people are playing Rogue now, some people will start playing Shaman. So it's just a very strong card. Um, also, even if it doesn't do anything, it's a 5 mana 5-4, and that kills Belcher and lives, which is important because a lot of people are playing Belcher. Uh, moving on, we've cut down the Belcher to just one Belcher. Um, it's still a very strong card, but we can push our curve a little bit and try to go higher curve. 
and also we don't need the taunt as badly because we're usually going to be the one dealing with threats and there's uh, a few less aggressive decks so Belcher is a very good card but we're only playing one also people are playing um, Black Knight now because of the Druid deck so this cuts down our opponent's Black Knight targets and we can usually force it out before we actually have to play our Belcher uh, moving on we have two Shield Maiden uh, Court Warrior card it's very efficient 6 mana 5-5 five, five, gains us 5 armor enables our Shield Slams very solid body uh, so we can use it as a finisher and it's just a very good card um, in general um, now let's move on to all the legendaries. Uh, Sylvanas Windrunner uh, gains control of a random enemy minion. Uh, just a very good card. Uh, played in a lot of decks, especially control decks. We'll usually get its value, and if you have it on board and you brawl, you basically always win because if Sylvanas dies, you get their last remaining minion. Um, if Sylvanas is what survives, then Sylvanas survives, and you get to gain control of their enemy minion later. Um, you generally don't want to play this on an empty board, it's better when your opponent has some creatures on the board so you have a better chance of stealing one, but it's just a very good card, very efficient, still a 6 mana 5-5, five, five, same as Shield Maiden, and sometimes you'll win games just by dealing with all their threats and then beating down with a Shield Maiden or a Sylvanas. Moving on, we have Black Knight. A lot of people are playing the Druid deck with Ancient of War, so this uh, kills the 5-10 for free and gives you a 6 mana 4-5 body. Um, a lot more people are playing Belcher just in any deck. Uh, kills Tyrion, and all the Paladins are playing Tyrion now, so you, if uh, if they play a Tyrion, you can have sort of the dream with Black Knighting, then Harrison Jonesing away the Ashbringer. It's just a very strong card uh, right now in the meta, and it's a solid body, it also helps us beat down. It's a very good card, it'll almost usually have a target similarly to uh, BGH. And uh, Baron Geddon. Baron Geddon helps us clear... Um, if our opponent, if our Paladin opponent lives the dream with Quartermaster, then we can Baron Geddon and Whirlwind, or Baron Geddon combining Death Spite Trigger, to clear all the three three Silverhand recruits, uh, rather than having to use our Brawl to clear all the all the powerful minions. It also is just a very strong card. It can help bring our opponent low for a Grom combo. It's uh, it's a BGH target, and it's one of the earliest ones we can play on our deck. So if our opponent uses BGH on this because they're scared of the lasting board clear, then that um, leaves open all of our other cards for them to be hard to deal with. And it's just a very strong card. You can combo the two damage with a lot of different things to help get, um, to kill a creature when it enters and you still have the creature left and they have to deal with it. So that's usually going to get you a uh, card advantage. Moving on, Dr. Boom. Played in a lot of decks. Um, just a very good card. Gives you the two 1-1 one, one Boom bots. Makes a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, again, a BGH target, but if they're using BGH on this in your deck, then you have more cards that they would want to use BGH on. So it's just very strong. Helps you get board advantage when you're behind, uh, keeps your board advantage when you're ahead, and it's just a finisher. Also helps to get them low so you can activate Grom. Moving on, we have Grom, sort of core warrior card. It's a finisher. Uh, if you get them to 10 and you activate it with Death Spite or Whirlwind by damaging it, you could just kill them in uh, in one hit. Uh, Cruel Taskmaster and Grom is 12, although if they don't have taunts, then Death Spite um, to activate Grom is usually going to be 14 because you have the 4 death by damage and the 10 off Grom. Um, once they use their removal, you can also just sometimes play it as a 4-9, uh, kill one of their minions, and then have that threat on the board, and they won't be able to be it because, as we've talked about, they'll have used it on your earlier targets. Uh, moving on, we have Ragnaros, the Fire Lord. Uh, very strong card. Deals 8 damage to a random enemy, so sometimes you'll, you'll get angry at the card because it's not hitting what you want, but it'll usually be good... Uh, it gets you card advantage because it doesn't actually uh, directly interact with it in combat with the minions it's killing, so it doesn't ever take any damage, so your opponent has to have some sort of hard removal spell for it or just kill it with a lot of their minions. Um, so it's sort of like he has taunt and he doesn't take damage from attacking, uh, but he attacks random minions. Uh, he's kind of like an ogre in that way. But very strong card, good control finisher. Then we have Alexstrasza. Uh, another core warrior card, it can help reset our life total against aggro, although hopefully we're not seeing too much of that with this deck. And also, uh, Alex Straza setting them to 15, then dealing them some other damage a little bit, and then using Grom to finish them is a pretty common line you'll see with this deck. Uh, finally, we're actually playing Ysera in this deck. Uh, Ysera is sort of the definition of a slow card, because um, you play it, it's a 9 mana 412, so it's not immediately impacting the board, and what it does is uh, gives you card advantage by drawing you cards so it's very slow but again in this meta I think for now people are going to be sticking with the slower decks and Ysera will help us win those matchups uh, so that is the deck guys um, and then now we're going to jump into some matches and talk a little about strategy and uh, those of you that were asking for aggro um, articles or content I'll definitely be doing that soon I just sort of want uh, the, the dust on the undertaker to settle and to have some more time to test with the different aggressive decks um, and see what we can work out there.
So let's jump into some 